Hi everyone and welcome to Senior in Living today and today is story time. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. You're my saltines. And for those of you who are new here, welcome. You get to hear the story about why Senior in Living today came to be. So I'm Courtney Jones and I am the owner of Senior and Living Today. Senior and Living Today came out of my passion for seniors and caring for others. I don't feel that there's enough information out there for us and there are lots of hurdles and pitfalls that we can run into and I'm trying to minimize those for us over 50 and those that we care for. So for me, a lot of um, information I try to give to you about sharing information with other family members and those close to you. And the reason why that is, is because it's a soft spot for me. When I was 24, my mother passed away and she was 44 and I had just moved into the same town with her. I had been living in California and I moved back to my hometown. And shortly after I got there, I got a call from the coroner that my mom had passed away. And I was 24 with two little children under the age of five and it was a lot. It's always a lot when you lose someone in your family, but when you're 24, you're not ready to lose your mom. You're not ready to have to make decisions about what happens now. And that's the situation I was in. She had pets, she had an apartment, and you're like, what do I do? I was lost. Her brothers and sisters were in another state and, um, it was left up to me, to uh, me and my sister, to figure out, you know, where do we go from here? The first thing we noticed was that nothing was really written down. Um, the only thing we knew is a song that she liked to sing that would have been appropriate for a church service. And we had a pastor uh, lots of people call them different things, a pastor, minister, reverend, um, man of the cloth, person written down. And we called that person and he, he was her pastor at her church. We didn't know where her church was, didn't know um, her close friends. So we were kind of, we were really lost. We were really lost. So, you know, uh, of course the, the coroner's office is like, where do you want her body to go? Is she being um, cremated? Is she being buried? All these things that you, you don't know. Does she have a plot already? Did she pay for it? Um, things we just didn't know the answers to. And so we were very confused and very, conflicted and you run into that some people say barrier some people say cremator that kind of thing what do we do with her things who gets this who gets that nothing's written down um so those kinds of things were very difficult for us to navigate and that was my um uh, first thought of this information needs to be shared. You don't think about, what is it? You don't know what you don't know until you find out you don't know it. Is that is that how the saying goes or am I saying that wrong? Anyway, that's how I felt. Uh, it was a very emotional time. It was difficult to think clear. Like I said, I had the two little kids that I was trying to be stoic for and yet I just lost my mom and I have all these decisions to make and everybody wants answers so it was a very rough uh, situation to be in and you want to do the right thing we're always fearful of doing the right thing and of course for your parents 
you absolutely want to do the right thing. And so um, since we didn't know who her friends were, uh, it was, you know, I had come from out of state. We couldn't even, you know, ask them, you know, can you can you lend a hand? Because we didn't know who those people were. So um, like I said, now I think a lot about my own children and how things or what things would have made it easier for me at that time. And um, since we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, I think that we all should prepare for it. I, I want to make sure that my girls are never in the same situation. And statistics show that, you know, we can save almost anybody now. Uh, people live to 100 years old and they can cure all kinds of, um, pardon me, they can cure all kinds of things. And so the statistics show that we're more likely to become disabled than we are to pass away. And what I mean by that is disabled for even a short period of time. If you are in a car accident or if you have a stroke and you're down or unable to speak for a month or two, that type of thing is more likely to happen than us passing away. But during that, let's say two months, if you do have a stroke or you have open heart surgery or you're in ICU for some reason, who has your information? Who knows how to speak for you, how to take care of things for you and what your wishes are? And so I talk a lot about that on Senior in Living Today so that you're prepared if something happens to you, people know right away what to do. Oh, this is what she would want. This is what we need to do until he or she is, is you know, back on their feet. So it was really um, important to me to make sure that I have a place where we can share information and to kind of get the conversation started so that families will talk and share information and it won't be taboo. I know uh, when I started talking about this sort of thing with my daughters, the first thing they said was, oh, that's so morbid. Don't talk about stuff like that. But you know what? Talking about it won't make it happen. And I think that that's what they thought. If we if we talk about these sorts of things, something bad will happen. But it's it's just the opposite. It, it, it's not. Nothing bad is going to happen. And so I've been talking to my girls about it. And now they're just, you know, years and years and years have gone by. My girls are, you know, in their 30s. And they they know that's, that's just me. Um, that's how... You know, as parents, we want to protect our kids, and that's my way of protecting them, is making sure that it's one less thing that they have to struggle with, because I've made it crystal clear and easy for them. And, and I, I want that for everyone, because it's an uncomfortable feeling to not know what to do. So my intent is to very soon provide something for you and your family so that you will be able to navigate the question that your family has or may have and document the answers so that you have a resource and a place to go where you won't have so many questions. So um, look for that to be coming out soon in the next month or so um, to make things just a lot easier for everyone and remove the questions um, just in case something happens or you have some downtime, it will make things easy for you. Another reason why I am so passionate about seniors is the two matriarchs in my family were my grandmother, Mabel, and her best friend, Mary Ellen. And uh, my grandmother pretty much raised me. Um, like I said, I did have my mom, but you know how kids can be very close to their grandparents, and I was glued to mine and spent much of my time with her. And her best friend was, 
a um, U.S. Army colonel, Mary Ellen. And so he called her Ma Aunt Mary Ellen. You know, that's the respectful thing to do. And so we always knew her as Aunt Mary Ellen. It wasn't until we were long into adulthood that we realized she wasn't our blood relative because she raised us like, like that. So those two ladies were obviously a lot older, my grandmother and her best friend. And I had such respect for them and adored them so much that there was no way that I could not be passionate about seniors. And so that's where my love of seniors began. And then when I was in high school, you know, a lot of people, their first job is a fast food place. And my first job was working at the nursing home next door to my high school. And the love of seniors just grew from there. It never went away. I went on from there in, to facility caregiving, to private caregiving, to hospice caregiving, to motherhood and still caregiving. And it never has stopped. Uh, my love of seniors is real. And now that I am a senior myself, I look around, I see what obstacles I encounter and things that I wish I knew or am finding out. And I say to myself, I need to share that. I need to share that with the saltines. I need to share that on the channel. I need to make people aware of this because sharing information is what protects us knowing instead of not knowing is the way to make things easier so that is why I come here and I try to you know share information and when you guys share information with me then I, I present that because we all need to know we all need to stay on top of things the world is changing so fast it's hard to keep up. It's hard to believe that there was ever a time when there was no internet and we were dealing with, you know, microfiche and things like that. You know what I mean? Black and white TVs. Things have changed so much. And so as they're constantly changing, I want us to stay up to date on what's happening, share information and know that I see that we are more alike than we are different. And so I like that this is a place that we can come together and disseminate information. And I'm, I'm hoping that you agree. I'm hoping that you agree. Um, so if you have questions for me, put them in the comments, send me an email. Um, but I wanted to kind of, you know, let you know a little bit about my background where this channel came from, what I'm trying to do with it. And if you have more questions, then certainly send those to me. Um, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel so that you will get information as I am able to, <clears throat> as I'm able to pass it out to you and uh, share it with other seniors that you know and other caregivers because most of us are caregivers, you know, we're kind of, I call us the sandwich generation because we have our kids and our grandkids, nieces and nephews younger than us, and yet we still have moms and dads and aunts and uncles that are older than us, and we're sandwiched in between trying to take care of everybody. But while we're doing that, I want us to remember to take care of ourselves. And so this channel is for us to remember to do that. So you can find us here. You can find me on Facebook, on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, all of those places. You can submit your super senior candidates, and I will uh, talk about them on the channel. So if you've got a family member, a friend, or someone you just heard about, a parent, a teacher, anything that is a super senior, send that to me. And we will um, discuss that on the, on the channel. So submit your super seniors to me and we will review that. Um, you can go to um, our website. And if you go to our website, um, there's some newsletters there. Uh, there's some blogs there and you can sign up there 
to get the newsletter. We'll send the newsletter out to you so you can keep up to date. And pretty soon, in the next month or so, we will have um, merchandise so that you will be able to support the channel and also round proudly support that you are a senior living today. So we're really excited about being able to bring that to you. So that's going to be it for today. But remember, if you have questions, send them to me. I hope it kind of cleared up a little bit about my background, where I'm from, and what I'm trying to do bringing us all together on this channel. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time right here. I'm Caesar and living today. Goodbye.